This was supposed to land anywhere with a full 40 passengers, a revolutionary new British airliner meant to lift a company into fame. However, things didn't really go as planned. But why? Why were sales so bleak? And lastly, was it really a good replacement for the legendary DC-3? Well, let's have a look. So, it's the 50s and jets are taking over, flying higher, faster and quieter. That's all people wanted. But 50s jets are loud, expensive and need a lot of maintenance. So props were still a pretty big thing. And for smaller aircraft, jets were simply not possible. So British aircraft manufacturer Hawker Siddeley saw an opportunity. The legendary DC-3 service life was coming to an end and they saw it. So wanting to re-enter the civilian market, in 1958 it was decided to commence work upon a clean sheet design, which would eventually become the HS-748 on January 9th, 1959. The existence of the project, then referred to as the Avro 748, was announced to the public and development started. The initial plan for the airliner was to have a 20 to 30 seat configuration, somewhat resembling the rival Fokker F28 friendship. However, after engaging in discussions with potential customers, the company opted a different route, going for a low wing 40 seat design which became the chosen layout for the 748 project. During the development phase, the airframe underwent rigorous testing equivalent to 10,000 flight hours. This unique approach rendered the airframe without a set lifespan, setting it apart in the industry. Notably, Avro wasn't the sole player eyeing a replacement for the DC-3. Progress on the 748's direct competitor, the F-27 Fellowship, was well underway. So, in an effort to distinguish itself, Avro focused on creating a robust design with the hands short takeoff and landing, or stall, capabilities, making it suitable for operations from smaller, less equipped airports. The stall capability was achieved through several features, including a long, high lift wing with distinctive single slot flaps, equipped with a hinged flap tab at the trailing edge. Positioned low over the fuselage, this wing facilitated good ground clearance and allowed for the installation of strong landing gear. Pilots were provided with the flexibility of having three takeoff flat positions to choose from the desired level of stalk performance. In addition to these design configurations, the 748 adopted a straightforward approach by incorporating proven components and easy to inspect systems. This practical and rugged design quickly gained the attention of various airlines, including those particularly operating in remote areas, appreciating the 748's ability to handle short, rough fields without extensive ground service equipment, while accommodating payloads exceeding £10,000. In a remarkably brief development period, the 748 took to the skies for its maiden flight on June 24th, 1960 at Woodford, Chestershire. The aircraft's performance was outstanding. Following additional testing, and it secured its flight certificate and by April 1962, the first production aircraft was delivered to its launch customer Skyways Coach Air Limited. The initial production run focused on the Series 1 aircraft, but soon turned to the improved Series 2. The Series 2 retained many features of its predecessor, but boasted enhancements, primarily in the form of more powerful Dart engines and an increased gross rate. As time progressed, the Series 2A was launched in 1967, featuring the same aircraft base but powered by Mark 532 engines and a further increase in gross weight. From 1971 onwards, customers were presented with new options, including a subsequent freight cabin door and a reinforced cabin floor. Subsequent developments included the introduction of the Series 2B in 1979, marked by a full foot increase in wingspan, adaptation of Mark 536 engines and a modernized passenger cabin, plus various other improvements like fuel and engine fire protection. Interestingly, India became a part of the Avro 748's production history. The country ordered the aircraft leading to Hindustan Aeronautics, or HAL, featuring both Series 1 and 2 under license, known as the HAL 748. 
HAL completed 89 Indian-built aircraft with 72 serving the Indian Air Force and 17 delivered to Indian Airlines. The aircraft's production journey concluded in 1988 with a total of 381 units, encompassing both British assembled and Indian built examples. The last British assembled aircraft took its inaugural flight on December 1st of that year, marking the end of an era. The production era of the Avro 748 came to a close in 1988, leaving behind a legacy of 381 manufactured aircraft. These planes found homes in fleets of 79 operators spanning 50 countries globally, showcasing the broad international appeal and adaptability of the aircraft. Notable among these operators were major airlines like Aerolinas Argentinas, Varig, Philippine Airlines and Thai Airways. These carriers strategically integrated the Avro 748 into their operations leveraging its capabilities across diverse routes and operational requirements. The aircraft's influence extended beyond commercial aviation, making its mark in military deployments. The Royal Air Force, RAF, the Indian Air Force, Brazilian Air Force and the Royal Australian Air Force en all enlisted the Avro 748 for various strategic roles. The Avro 748 global impact and enduring presence across continents underscore its significance in aviation history its role in both civilian and military operations. The Avro 748 with a crew of two individuals and an optional passenger attendant, boasting a capacity to accommodate 40 to 58 passengers or carry a payload of 11,300 pounds. Its dimensions include a length of 67 feet, a wingspan reaching 102 feet and a height of 24 feet. The wing area spans 829 square feet, hosting a fuel capacity of 1,440 imperial tons, or 6,500 liters. Distributed across two integral wing tanks and propelled by two Rolls-Royce RDA7 Dart MK 536-2 turboprop engines each generating 2,280 shaft horsepower. The Avro 748 achieves a cruising speed of 244 knots, or 452 kilometers an hour. With a maximum payload, its range extends to 926 nautical miles, 1,066 kilometers. The aircraft reaches a service ceiling of 25,000 feet, 7,600 meters, showcasing its operational capabilities across a wide range of specifications. So, after all this, is it still in service? In Europe? No. Almost all are retired today, since this is a 50s airliner. The Indian Air Force still does use a sizable amount, as well as other air forces, but in civilian use, the only real place to find it is in Canada. There are only two airlines flying, with a total of seven still flying, with plans to end flights. The HS-748, a little known, forgotten 50s Islander. It was reliable, efficient and could land almost anywhere. But eventually, like all aircraft of its time, it got replaced by newer, more fuel efficient aircraft. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. See ya!